It was the year 2017 when astronomers spotted a bright star hurtling out of the Milky Way. It was moving incredibly fast at a speed of 2 million miles per hour. That's almost four times as fast as the Sun orbits around the center of our home Milky Way galaxy. It takes our star more than 225 million years to complete one journey. Anyway, back to our star, the Wanderer. The main issue with it was that it was moving against the direction in which most stars travel around the center of our galaxy. Even more bizarre, it consisted of totally different star stuff. Astronomers managed to identify its composition. The star was made up of heavy metallic atoms. At the same time, most of the other stars consist of way lighter elements. The wandering star got the name LP40365. It was moving so fast that it literally dashed out of our galaxy. This made scientists believe that the space traveler was pushed out of its place by some kind of cosmic disaster, like a supernova. A supernova is the largest explosion that can take place in space, an explosion of a star. It happens after irreversible changes start in the core of a star. Supernovas can occur in two ways, in binary star systems and when there's a single star. Binary stars are two stars orbiting around the same center. At some moment, one of the stars, a very dense white dwarf, starts stealing matter from its companion. After some time, this thief accumulates too much matter, which causes it to explode into a supernova. Or it can be a single star nearing the end of its life. It's running out of its fuel. More and more mass is flowing into the core of the star. In the end, the core becomes so heavy that it fails to withstand its own gravity. After the core collapses, a tremendous amount of energy is released in a supernova. But astronomers still can't figure out how a supernova could send LP40365 flying. There are more questions than answers. Was it a companion star that got flung out by a shockwave created by a supernova? Or was it a piece of the exploded star? A new study based on the collected data has shown that the star, which is a white dwarf, keeps slowly rotating around its axis. Astronomers are almost sure it means LP40365 is indeed just a chunk of space debris, and not a full-fledged star. This wandering piece somehow managed to survive one of the fiercest space events. But after making such a conclusion, scientists realize something amazing. LP40365's unusual features could appear after the star witnessed a supernova. Even though this event happened lightning fast, the entire makeup of the star got changed. Most stars consist mainly of helium and hydrogen, but LP40365 is different. It contains such heavy elements as magnesium, oxygen, and neon. It must have been the supernova that added these atoms to the star's composition. By the way, astronomers consider all elements that are heavier than helium to be metals. This means that after witnessing the supernova, LP40365 became metallic. Right now, the star doesn't have its own planets, but NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, which is on the lookout for distant planets passing in front of their host stars and dimming them, has noticed a curious thing. LP40365 brightens and then dims again every 8.9 hours. It might mean that the star pulsates, but usually stellar pulsations are much less regular. A more plausible explanation is that the star's surface is uneven. And as it spins, sunspots are brought into and out of view. And it's great news, because after astronomers figure out how fast the star rotates, they can understand what happened to it around 5 million years ago during the supernova. Bright blue exoplanet HD 189733b looks peaceful and eerily familiar. Doesn't it resemble Earth? But this appearance conceals the planet's terrifying nature. There, the winds blow at 5,400 miles per hour. It's seven times the speed of sound. But that's not the worst. It rains glass, sideways, in this scorching, hot world. Neutron stars are ultra-dense collapsed cores of giant stars. They emit X-rays or radio waves. But in 2018, astronomers discovered a weird stream of infrared light. It seemed to be coming from a neutron star 800 light-years away from our planet. 
The most plausible theory is that this signal was probably produced by a disk of dust surrounding the star. But there isn't enough evidence to confirm this idea. Mercury is the fastest planet in the solar system. It zips around the Sun at a breakneck speed of more than 100,000 miles per hour. That's around 40,000 miles per hour faster than our home planet. It's one of the reasons why a year on Mercury equals 88 days on Earth. Mercury is the planet that orbits the closest to the Sun. That's why if you were standing on its surface at its closest approach to our star, the Sun would look more than three times as large as it does on Earth. The Black Widow Pulsar is a rotating neutron star that is munching on its partner, which is a lightweight brown dwarf star. The more material the pulsar consumes, the more slowly it spins. The energy the neutron star is losing in the process causes the companion star to dwindle. There's a stellar nursery in the constellation Centaurus. And even though this place is called a nursery, it's anything but peaceful or safe. It's made up of hydrogen and newborn stars and is located in a nebula around 6,500 light years away from Earth. A nebula is a giant cloud of gas and dust floating in space. The intense energy baby stars emit makes hydrogen clouds glow ominous red. This energy is so powerful, it's eating away dark clouds of dust. Astronomers can see them disappear like lumps of butter on a hot frying pan. Faraway Neptune-sized exoplanet Gliese 436b is a paradox. It's made of scorching hot ice, and this ice is burning. The planet completes one full orbit around the red dwarf Gliese 436 in just two days. It means the exoplanet travels very close to its parent star. That might be the reason why the planet's temperatures rarely drop below 800 degrees Fahrenheit. But the strangest thing? The planet hosts huge volumes of water ice, known as Ice X. And this ice remains solid despite such incredibly high temperatures. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. It's 318 times as massive as Earth. It's also two and a half times as massive as all other planets of the solar system combined. But here's a paradox. If this gas giant got even more massive, it'd actually become smaller. The added mass would make the planet denser, and this would cause it to start pulling in on itself. Astronomers claim that Jupiter can eventually end up being four times as massive as it is now. But at the same time, its size won't change. DGSAT1 galaxy is as big as the Milky Way, but it's nearly invisible because its stars are spread out incredibly thin. But what makes the galaxy so unique is that it's sitting all alone, unlike other galaxies of this kind. Those are usually found in clusters. It can mean that DGSAT1 was formed in a different era, probably a mere 1 billion years after the Big Bang. If it's true, the galaxy is a real living fossil. Saturn's moon, Hyperion, is one of the most bizarre-looking moons in the solar system. But the appearance isn't the strangest thing about this space body. The pumice stone-like rock is pockmarked with countless craters, and it's also charged with static electricity, which is flowing out into space. About 4,000 light-years away from Earth, there's a planet that seems to be one enormous diamond. The planet is denser than any other discovered so far and consists mostly of carbon. It's so dense that astronomers think this carbon might be crystalline. It means that at least some part of the planet is diamond. Ceres is the most massive space body in the asteroid belt between Jupiter and Mars. It totals almost a third of the entire mass of the whole belt. But at the same time, Ceres is the tiniest of the dwarf planets out there. It's also the only dwarf planet that dwells in the asteroid belt and also the only one that is located in the inner solar system. Astronomers sometimes call Jupiter a failed star. The gas giant indeed contains a lot of helium and hydrogen. But its mass isn't enough to start a fusion reaction in its core. And that's exactly how stars produce energy. They fuse the atoms of hydrogen together under extreme pressure and heat and create helium. In the process, they also release light and heat. Jupiter could start a nuclear reaction and become a star only if it was 70 times its current mass. Space is completely, eerily silent. 
That's because in the vacuum of space, there's no atmosphere, and the sound waves need some medium to travel through. That's why worlds with atmospheres like Earth are full of noise. Unlike their massive siblings, hypothetical mini black holes could be really tiny, not bigger than an atom. Even so, just one minuscule thing would have enough mass of a thousand sedans. One theory claims that tons of micro black holes could be created right after the Big Bang. Some scientists even go so far as to say that a couple of mini black holes pass through our planet every day. Every hour, the Sun sends more energy to Earth than our planet uses in a year. Even though people are now using much more solar energy than a decade ago, it's still a mere 0.7% of the world's annual electricity usage. There might be moons orbiting other moons, but astronomers haven't agreed on this theory yet. Planets orbit stars, moons orbit planets. But why can't there be moon moons, also known as submoons, moonettes, and moons? Researchers claim that moon moons could exist, but the host moon has to be massive enough and the moon moon small enough. There must also be a large distance between these moons and the host planet. Jupiter is the most massive planet in the solar system. This means its gravity is also the most intense. It's 2.5 times as great as what we have on our home planet. Once, the gas giant's gravity even tore apart a large comet called Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9. Then the planet eagerly swallowed the chunks of the former comet. If you were standing at the equator on Mars, the temperature at your feet would feel like that of a warm spring day but your head would be literally freezing. Lost in space and drifting through galaxies, rogue planets were once flung away from their parent stars, but one of them floating 200 light years away from Earth is different from the rest. It's a planet-sized object with a magnetic field 200 times stronger than that of Jupiter. This field is so powerful that it generates never-ending flashing auroras in the planet's atmosphere. Europa is one of Jupiter's largest moons, even though it's smaller than Earth's moon. But the cool thing about this satellite of the gas giant is that it's covered with ice. And some of this ice is smooth, which means you could skate there. And a three-foot axle jump you can perform on our planet would take you 22 feet into the air. At the same time, the landing speed on Europa would be the same as it is on Earth. Haumea, a dwarf planet orbiting the Kuiper Belt, has a bizarre elongated shape and two moons. The day on this planet lasts four hours, making it the fastest spinning large object in the solar system. But the most mysterious thing about Haumea is that the planet has a thin 40-mile-wide ring circling it. Astronomers haven't managed to figure out how or why it appeared around the dwarf planet. Eleven Earths could fit across the equator of Jupiter. And if our planet was the size of a grape, the gas giant would be as large as a basketball. Nine spacecraft have already visited Jupiter. Seven of them just flew by, and two orbited the huge planet. The most recent of them, Juno, arrived at Jupiter in 2016. The craters of the moon's south pole are likely to be the frostiest place in the whole solar system. The crater's floors are always in the shadow. That's why the temperature never rises above 397 degrees Fahrenheit, even during the day. If you decided to fly a plane to Pluto, your journey would take around 800 years. You'll find the highest mountain in the solar system on an asteroid called Vesta. Its peak rises 14 miles above the base of the mountain. This makes Rye Silvia, that's what the mountain is called, almost three times taller than Everest. Saturn's rings weren't discovered all at once. It happened gradually. That's why they were named alphabetically, in the order scientists found them. Now they go like this. D, C, B, A, F, G, and E. A day on Venus is around 243 Earth days long. But the bad news is that you'd have to wait for a weekend for three years. All because a day on Venus is longer than its year. A solar phenomenon called Terminator Events is taking place at the Sun's equator. Disastrous magnetic field collisions seem to cause ginormous twin tsunamis of plasma. 
These tsunamis tear across the star's surface, moving at a speed of 1,000 feet per second. They can last for weeks at a time and happen almost every decade. The winds on Neptune are the fastest in our solar system. Most of them can reach the speed of 1,600 miles per hour. Almost any of these enormous storms could easily swallow our entire planet. The 18th brightest star in the night sky, Fomalhaut, is a terrifying sight. It's dubbed the Eye of Sauron because a ring of dust and debris circling it makes it look like a giant eye staring into your soul. The intimidating star is more than twice the mass of our Sun and is 25 light years away from Earth, which isn't that far away considering distances in space. Mars has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. In the next 30 to 50 million years, the planet's gravitational forces will tear Phobos apart. It'll probably result in the formation of a ring around Mars. An asteroid the size of a car enters the atmosphere of our planet every year. Such an intruder could wipe out a small town off the face of the Earth. Dust and smoke would rise into the atmosphere, preventing sunlight from reaching the surface of the planet. It would cause the temperatures all over the world to drop and the climate would change. Luckily, such asteroids burn in the atmosphere before they even come close to the surface. The radio signal produced by a spacecraft when it contacts Earth is less powerful than a light bulb in your fridge. By the time this signal reaches our planet, its power is only one billionth of one billionth of a watt. No wonder that antennas gathering these super weak signals are huge. The deep space network that detects signals from spacecraft has dish antennas that measure up to 230 feet across. That's more than the width of a soccer field. In 1999, NASA lost a Mars orbiter because one engineering team was using the metric system and another was doing calculations with the help of the imperial system. Nebulas are giant clouds of gas and dust. With time, gravity starts to pull these clumps of dust and gas together. They grow larger and larger. And their gravity gets more powerful. One day, a nebula's mass becomes so great that it collapses under its own gravity and forms a new star. Around 4,000 light years away, in the constellation of Scorpion, there is the Butterfly Nebula. Its wingspan is greater than three light years, and the structure inside the nebula is one of the most complicated ever observed. The nebula's central star, a white dwarf, is heated to an insane 450,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This means it was formed from another huge star, likely more than five times the size of our Sun. The white dwarf is surrounded by a thick disk of dust and gas at the equator. That's what probably makes the whole structure look like an hourglass or a butterfly. If you decided to lump together all the known asteroids in the solar system, their total mass wouldn't exceed even 10% of the mass of our moon. A cloud of water vapor is floating in space. It surrounds a supermassive black hole 12 billion light years away from Earth. The cloud contains 140 trillion times the entire volume of water on our planet. Astronomers think this water cloud appeared just 1.6 billion years later than the universe itself. The densest objects in space are neutron stars. They are the size of a small city. Yet their mass is about 1.4 times the mass of our sun. A single teaspoon of neutron star material would weigh a billion tons. And a neutron star's gravity is 2 billion times stronger than the gravity of our planet. In 1993, the Galileo probe was traveling past a miniature asteroid. It was no more than 20 miles across. And still, the tiny thing had a one-mile-wide moon. Astronomers have discovered tons of moons orbiting minor planets in the solar system since then. We live inside the Sun. The star's atmosphere stretches way beyond its visible surface, and our planet is well within its reach. That's how the gust of the solar wind creates such a breathtaking phenomenon as the northern and southern lights. Picture this. You've won a membership to a space gym. You get to travel around the solar system and work out. But gravity changes on different space bodies. So let's find out if you can get stronger elsewhere, or if you should keep practicing on Earth. Your spaceship is approaching dwarf planet Pluto. It's getting chillier by the second. 
No wonder! The Sun is over 3.7 billion miles away. You must be glad you brought your thermal spacesuit along, right? To leave the spacecraft, Earthlings would need the help of a gravity machine, since gravity on Pluto is a mere 1 15th of that on Earth. Gravity is the force that pulls you toward the ground. The smaller the mass of a space body is, the weaker its gravity. So, on Pluto, you can't do any sports that involve running. If you did, you'd most likely fly away. You can try out elephant lifting, though. After all, you can't do it back on Earth. On Pluto, picking up an elephant weighing 2,000 pounds feels like lifting 120 pounds. The next stop is Neptune. It's over 30 times farther away from the Sun than Earth. The atmosphere there is dark and cold. You might get overwhelmed by the planet's gigantic size. It's called an ice giant for a reason. Maybe today you'll feel like doing some winter sports? To say Neptune exists in perpetual winter is an understatement. The average temperature on this planet is around minus 373 degrees Fahrenheit. But gravity here is only 10% stronger than that on Earth, so you don't feel much difference. This world doesn't have a solid surface, so you won't be able to leave the spacecraft. Is that an ice hockey rink I see? Grab your ice skates and your stick and get ready to outplay your fellow passengers. How about a quick pit stop on Uranus? This is another ice giant, and gravity here is 90% of that on Earth. You can do a few push-ups inside the spacecraft, as you won't be stepping outside. The slushy surface of the planet is made up of water, methane, and ammonia in its liquid form. There's no solid ground to walk on. But if you somehow found a way to go outside, you'd feel lighter than on Earth. If you weighed 100 pounds back home, it would be 90 pounds here. Can we call this a Uranian diet? When approaching Saturn, please mind its rings, which aren't actually rings. They consist of pieces of asteroids and meteors flying around the planet. Saturn's mass is so big that it attracts many other space bodies to its orbit. And right now, you're one of them! Time to get creative with your workout! You've scheduled a skydiving experience here. If you freefall in Saturn's atmosphere, you'll reach the speed of 30 miles per second. Don't forget to open your parachute. Eh, on second thought, though, you won't be able to touch the ground anyway. Saturn's surface is pure gas. Quick fun fact, once Saturn got in the way of the 10th planet forming in the solar system, the planet's debris, which partially makes up Saturn's rings now, could have blended into a planet. But it was pulled into Saturn's orbit instead. You're nearing Europa, one of Jupiter's moons. Gravity here is so weak, you feel weightless. Let's say there's a rock climbing wall there. How about you give it a try? Usually, this sport requires a lot of physical strength. But here, you'll only have to carry 13% of your weight. Your climb to the top will be easy-peasy in these conditions. Entering Jupiter's atmosphere will feel like being inside a cloud. See that red spot in the bottom left corner? That's a storm twice the size of Earth that's been raging for hundreds of years. To have some fun here, why don't you do some jumping jacks? I'll count to 100. Ready, set, go! Gravity here is super strong. It's two and a half times as powerful as gravity on Earth. So you'll probably get exhausted at the count of 30. <laughs> Too bad. Uh-oh! Passengers aboard the spacecraft, fasten your seatbelts. You might experience some heavy turbulence. To travel from Jupiter to Mars, you'll have to move through an asteroid belt. Just in case you're worried your ship will bump into something, relax, there's a distance of 300,000 miles between asteroids. Let's stop at Ceres, the only dwarf planet in the asteroid belt. Gravity here will make you feel pretty strong. How about practicing some caber tossing? Cabers are heavy logs that can measure up to 20 feet long. The goal is to throw them as far as possible. Here, a 180-pound pole feels as if it weighs 5 pounds, which is, basically, the weight of a melon. Ready for the series caper competition? Woohoo! Finally, Mars. Remember all those handstands you've always wanted to try? Well, here's the place to do them. Mars's gravity is about 2.5 times weaker than that on Earth, which means you'll probably be able to lift your own body weight without any difficulty. Since people keep trying to terraform Mars, opening a gym here doesn't sound like a bad idea, does it? 
Passengers and crew members were now beginning our descent to Phobos. It's one of Mars's moons. Gravity here is incredibly weak. If you've always dreamed of having superhuman strength, this is the place for you. You can work out here by, say, doing some artistic gymnastics. Start off with a cartwheel, then move on to tricks performed in the air. On Phobos, you can start doing triple back handsprings in no time. Ah, look! Earth is about to appear on the horizon. It sure looks majestic from here. But we won't stop there now. Instead, let's visit Earth's sister, Venus. It has almost the same mass as Earth, which means these planets have similar gravities. Now, Earthlings can't survive on Venus's surface because of the large amount of ammonia in its atmosphere. But let's imagine you could practice some outdoor sports there. Do you feel like trying bumper bubble soccer? That's when you dress yourself in a giant bubble ball vest and keep bumping into other players. People play this game on Earth. On Venus, with its slightly weaker gravity, it might be a little bit easier. But still, you have to consider you'll be wearing a 25-pound ball as a vest. Kind of like a hamster back on Earth. Not to mention your outfit will restrict your arms and legs. It's a challenge, but it sounds fun to me. Moving on, if you land on the sunny side of Mercury, you'll experience scalding hot temperatures of 800 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're feeling tired after your space workout, a relaxing, steamy sauna will be just the thing. You'll feel like a brand new person by the time you arrive on the next planet. We'll fly as close to the sun as we can so that you can have a taste of its gravity. The sun's mass is huge. It's over 333,000 times the mass of Earth. And gravity here is extremely powerful. You'd have trouble lifting something as light as a bottle of water if you managed to step on the surface of the sun. Too hot, you say? Well, I imagine it's a whole lot cooler if you come back at night. <laughs> Just kidding! On our way back home, we'll stop by the moon. I mean, our Earth's natural satellite. Walking on the surface of the moon will feel like jumping. You'll be able to jump as far as 33 feet. So why not try some parkour? If you play basketball, scoring a point will be very difficult. But then you can jump higher than the hoop and do an epic slam dunk. And how about baseball? If you throw the ball upward, you'll probably never see it again. Finally, we land on Earth. Sorry to disappoint you, but you're not coming back with any superhuman strength. Even when you were lifting an elephant, gravity was helping you out a lot. It was a good trip, though. Don't you think so?